Yeah. Look at this. Look at this beast. Yeah. So, so today's topic is going to be Mad Cat's bankruptcy and Shane's giant biceps or not well, so giant biceps. I'm just trying to figure out, you know, how come every time you come around my London, London bridge makes me want to go down. <laughs> I don't know at all where you're going from there, and it looks like you were confused as you were doing it. Yeah, so, I, don't, I don't know. I just really wanted to work those song lyrics in somewhere. I thought that would be fun. Yeah, you don't have your orange on the side of your old-fashioned. <laughs> I am I'm having an orange crisis. Uh, apparently, having... there's an orange shortage in my oh. household. Oh, in your not in your okay. And uh, apparently, you have to go buy those things at a store. Uh, they don't just grow on trees. <laughs> they do, but I guess we'll we'll have a podcast about how commerce work, works. So, oh, my bad. Oh my gosh! All right, so today's topic we're going to talk about Mad Cats filing for bankruptcy. What took them so long? Well, they they were the. Uh, the cheap man's controller forever. Uh, the, I mean, I, ha I had it when I was a uh, when I was growing up. Mad Cats was the controller uh, that I would buy. I really never had much problems with them, uh, but I typically have the controller that came with the console I bought, and then a few Mad Cats controllers. You know, and I just uh, never liked third-party controllers to begin with. Mad they Cat, don't feel good. yeah, Mad Cats made. I, I would say higher quality of the third party mm -hmm. controllers. They were a little more reliable, but overall uh, I just hated third party controllers. They broke too easily. A lot of times they didn't connect. Some of the buttons wouldn't work. Um, so it just put me off a of third party altogether, including mad cats. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there are some other knockoff brands too, but mad cats was kind of like the, the name brand of generics. Right. Uh, they they were agree the, with that. They were the, the top known guys in that market, and um, probably the best you can get that was unlicensed. So, so, so hearing this is kind of shocking, but it's kind of not because anymore. I mean, uh, you don't just see you don't see them as much anymore. I think that that Mad Cats had the line with uh, Rock Band, and I'm pretty sure this is why they're filing bankruptcy is because they, a deal Rock Band Four wasn't going to happen. So uh, they they were. They put all their eggs in one basket, so to say, and they failed. I think Mad Cats in a lot of ways was like the early Nintendo Wii, right? That a lot of it was gimmicky. You know, you could buy a racing game, and instead of just using the controller, you could buy the Mad Cats wheel and yeah. pedals, you know, and use that for a couple games. Eh, you know, what's the incentive for people to really buy and use it a lot? Right. Not much. Or they, they would sell the Turbo Controller or... You know, different things like that. That just yeah, and, and a lot of those were useless. You know, I mean, how much turbo can you use in games anymore? Uh, try playing Dark Souls with a turbo controller. Right. It's, it's not, not about swing that. The sword any faster. You know, back in the Sega Genesis times and Super Nintendo times, where you had those side scrollers that you just had to mash that button as fast as you can. Uh, then it was yeah. useful. So if Mad Cats was smart, they would have went to the indie side. And partner with some indie games to you know make their controllers more geared towards that type of market. You know where you could still use turbo, still use uh, save combinations or whatever the case is. You know with those extra buttons they had sometimes. Right, but I I, I think that they, they they did something really neat with Rock Band, right? Because they were they were kind of like you bought you bought Guitar Hero or Rock Band and you get the the guitar, but you know, you want to get another guitar because your friend wants to come over and play with you or this or that. And it's, it's always nice because, I mean, those things, I'm not saying they, they broke easily, but they were pretty cheap, like cheaply made. So if you want to go buy another one, the Mad Cats, that was like this in these last five years. This is where they've been, more than five years probably. So they kind of got out of the controller, bit, the, the normal controller business, and they got in this niche market of, of let's make these cheap guitars uh, and and other devices, and right, and it didn't really work out for them too well because Rock Band and Guitar Hero, 
those didn't stay popular long enough. You know, I feel that most people, I think, just got strung out on them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there, there are no strings on that, but I, I strummed out because you can strum. Never mind. I don't know. I was trying to do a Shane joke and it failed. So I'm just going to leave those jokes to you. Uh-huh. Right. Yeah. I mean, however you want to work it out. I mean, there's no strings attached. Now that now that one made sense, so uh, that that was a good one. But they they filed Chapter Seven bankruptcy, and they are no more. So I'm not really gonna miss them. I don't. I didn't really have any big connection with them, except for I think I have a few of their controllers still for for old uh, old generation systems. Yeah, you said they're filing Chapter Seven, so they're liquidating their assets, and I still have no urge to buy any of their products. As cheap as they might be on the open market, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're uh, they probably be even cheaper now, and they're still just garbage, really. So, good riddance. Um, is there any other makers out there that that make third party controllers? Is there any other companies out there that that do this besides Mad Cats anymore? You know, I have no idea. Oh. I think the closest thing I could think of, and it's not even a third party. Is just being able to buy used controllers if you go to GameStop or something. But right. I believe most of those are still all uh, name brand. They're just resold. And the only uh, exception I can think is joysticks for fighting games. Uh, if you were to buy a Street Fighter 4 once upon a time, you could get a huge joystick to play that with. And I think Mad Cats probably should have went that route or something similar. But- but the problem with that, those were licensed. Uh, Mad Cats was the non-licensed one, so they can get it a lot cheaper, right? Um, I, I agree, yeah. They, that's probably what they were doing. But it, if you look on the internet and you can search for uh, customizable joysticks, you know a lot of those are yeah. either not licensed or barely licensed. Right, uh, yeah, yeah. I think a lot of those companies make a killing. You know, They put... Uh, customize graphics on whatever you want to do, however you want mm-hmm. the buttons. Mad Cat should have went that route and started doing joysticks for fighting games. And because the tournament scene is huge in those areas still, I mean, every year Marvel vs. Capcom comes out or Street Fighter comes out, and the tournament scene just takes over. And people will bring their own joysticks, right, you know, and, and plug them in just to get an advantage. So it is, it is important to say that that Mad Cats did have fights, you know, fighting sticks, uh, but they didn't have quality ones that, you know, appealed to people that were. I mean, if you're in a tournament, and you if you want a fight stick like that, you usually want to spend some money and get a quality one. You you're not gonna cheap out. I right. mean, people don't do that. So yeah, you're you're absolutely right. But uh, to be fair, they did make some. Um, so I have no fact, idea. Fun fact, do you know who uh, invented the D-pad? Wasn't that Sega? No, it was Nintendo. Nintendo invented the D-pad. And did you know that they copyrighted it or I had a patent on it? So nobody else can make a D-pad? So if thought, you look at... I thought Sega did that for the Genesis, wasn't that... So Sega made their... their and it's called a directional button. It's not called a D-pad. It's called a directional button, and they made it um, a lot. It, they made it different. It's it's functionally different. Um, and I think about ten years ago that patent faded, and they didn't renew it or anything. So anybody can make the D-pads now. But it's pretty interesting. That's kind of Nintendo's route, right? So let's patent it. Nobody can make these little D-pads that are just so simple and easy. But yeah, that's which, a which is kind of surprising because. You figured Nintendo would be all open to giving people the D pad. <laughs> yeah, nice save there. 